So traveling in a van because it's tight quarters and small space can be challenging for um, to, for maneuvering around and, and just mobility, um, especially if you have Parkinson's because you might be stiff or have balance issues or um, be very slow moving or even tremor can affect that. So that's sec that, that can be a real problem. Um, for me, I don't have much of a tremor, especially since DBS, and, but I do have rigidity in the morning. So scooting down to the end of the bed, getting to the bathroom is a bit of a challenge in the morning just because I have to maneuver around my husband and kind of sidle down the middle of the van. And then, but it, but in the, on the other hand, because it's small and a small space and enclosed space, there's, there's less opportunity for tripping and um, having falls, that type of thing. So the, the van life has been perfect for me as far as um, managing the, the motor type symptoms that we have with Parkinson's. What about you? I agree. I'm relatively new to the van life, but I love the van. I can get in and out easily uh, because of the, um, what's the thing called in the steps? The Running. With running the running board. board, yes, that's how new yeah. I am to this. The running boards, and then we have um, hand uh, grips on both sides of the door that I can use to get up into the van. Um, I agree that getting up in the morning off this bed is difficult. I might be a little stiff from the night before. And so what we do for that is we change the sheets. In the winter, we have the heavier sheets, and we do travel in the winter. Um, and then in the summer, we have light, slippery sheets to, to, to help. Mm -hmm. Um, balance is a big issue for me also, and um, getting in and out of the van has been hard, but it's not as hard as getting up into my big pickup, as you saw. Um, my stiffness, um, the bradykinesia, kinesia, bradykinesia, is that how you say it? <laughs> yeah, I Brady, so. kinesia. <laughs> Slowness of movement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, can can um, delay or uh, disturb me from getting in and out of the passenger seat. That's a little bit harder than getting out in and out of the big door. So. Um, and I've noticed um, just recently I started having some freezing of gait walk in, in lateral movements. Mm -hmm. So that may be a challenge because I do have to do some sidling down the middle of the van if I'm getting around my husband. Um, uh -huh. So sideways movements might be a challenge. I haven't haven't tried it out yet uh -huh. so i'll have to kind of have to really think about that um, we have a little stool that we put outside of our slider door because the um our running running board is really narrow and it's really scary for me to get in and out if i use that so i can so with the little um step stool type thing um i can just step down onto the the, the stool and and i get out pretty quick pretty, pretty easily and loading the van can be a challenge too when we're getting ready to leave somewhere because it's not a good idea with Parkinson's, especially for, in my case in any way, in any sense, to carry things and climb into the van and then, then without falling or stumbling or having some type of accident. So um, what I do is I kind of come out, put things either on the floor or up on the counter and then climb up into the van. So. That, that helps me usually. So we've talked about tremors. Um, I'm not sure how that would affect us, uh, except for cooking. We didn't cover that. Like if you're cooking or yeah. eating, you had a significant um, tremor. How would that be different than home? I think it would be the same because you're just extending your life, but you're just on the road and you're in a van that's driving and that's actually your home for the time that you're on the, on the road. Yeah. So um, it's actually easier, I think, to be to travel in a van or then to drive in a car or through to the airport because you, you don't have to move around as much and you don't have to um, it doesn't take as long to get to places within your van as it would if you had to walk to a plane or you know walk into a restaurant because it's all right there and self-contained and i know so that, that your, it's easier your van is 19 feet is that correct it's 21. Oh, 21. 21. So you're just kind of like at the border of being able to get into a parallel parking spot or? Yeah, we can pretty much park in a spot, in any spot at any place. Um, we're about the same length as a pickup truck, and you know, one of the bigger pickup trucks. So mm -hmm. we can park in a regular parking spot. Okay. Um, 
rigidity rigidity um helping set up the camp uh our stiffness especially when we first get there i know we've had conversations about getting out with our flashlights and showing uh getting these signals <laughs> and all that you know to um guide our drivers into the parking spots they need to be in so that could be a problem. I notice when I get out, I'm supposed to hold the flashlight and my trekking pole to keep me standing up. Oh, that's challenging. <laughs> and yeah. do the signals. <laughs> so and keep everything so that it's, it's doing the right right messaging. Mm -hmm. And then dexterity. I have dystonia in my, one of my hands and the, my dexterity and fine, for fine motor movements is, cha is, is challenging at times. So if you have to connect, uh, say, a cabling or something on the outside, that can be difficult at times. And then switching our refrigerator from over from propane to um, electric or whatever can be can be tedious, even for my husband who doesn't have Parkinson's, but even more so for me. That can be a that can be a. Let's let's sum up these uh, motor symptoms by talking about what's positive about. Oh, yeah. Or motor symptoms what um well you can for me um i can the way we travel in the van i can still exercise and you know alleviate some of that rigidity instead of uh, the sense of movements like i have this ball that i put mm -hmm. between my legs to squeeze mm -hmm. and you know get my legs stronger so that i have i can keep the keep the fitness level that i've attained so that i don't have as much risk of falling and that type of thing um, I have these things, these little therapy putty things for my hands that I can squeeze and do things like that. So um, just the way that we travel is like being at home, I think. And we, we know how to adapt to our symptoms at home and, and make them not an issue. So you can do the same thing in your van while you're traveling, more so than if you're at the liberty of someone else. Yes. You know. In some of the conversations Marty and I have had, I've talked about we go to visit somebody and then they want us to stay at their house. And we're perfectly fine staying in the driveway or out on the street and um, because all our stuff is in here. So we don't have to pack it up again to take it into somebody else's house. And I'm, you know, so we have to have communication with them about that. Yeah, we appreciate it, your offer, but we've got all our stuff in our van. We just want to stay there. Right. It's hard it's to... It's like our stay. second home, basically, so... And yeah. One thing I've noticed about traveling is um, the stimulation I get and also the I'm moving more. It seems like some days I can sit at the computer all day while I'm not doing that while we're driving and getting in and out, uh, climbing into the back to use the, the restroom, things like that. I, I always feel better when I travel. And I, yeah, I do too. And I sleep better when I travel. I, I think maybe that's because of the more activity, but also because the fresh air i don't know it's just i just sleep better and i'm on a better schedule as far as my sleep hygiene because i go to sleep when my husband does and then i wake up early when he does instead of staying up doing whatever i do sometimes at home yeah. so i i'm getting more regular um with controlled sleep so it's ah. i feel better on the road it'd be interesting to hear how you do in your four week four months yeah. or four weeks four, four weeks. weeks four weeks okay yeah. Well, let's move on to some non-motor symptoms and how they affect us when we're traveling or camping. Um, balance is a big thing the, for me. The first thing that impacts me the most is urinary urgency oh. and frequency. Instead of having to plan our trip around where the bathrooms are, um, we have a bathroom ready to go in with us. So I, I don't typically use it when we're moving, although if I need to, I do, but we, we can pull over and use the restroom right then and there and be done with it. Um, so that's been really helpful for me. That's probably the best thing as far as managing non-motor symptoms. Um, what, anything that, that you can add to that? Um, yeah, the having the restroom on board is just great. The trouble that um, we have is finding the dumps for the black water <laughs> tank is where the your waste goes into the black water tank. And um, we were talking last night about uh, spending $40 to get into a campground just <laughs> to yeah. dump a badly needed dump. But um, yeah, and, and my toilet is set up and there's little handholds and they're indented into the wall. 
So I have those nice um, little grips in there. That's that, nice. Yeah, because sometimes I'm pretty unsteady. Um, let's see, we have some swallowing um, listed in our so non speech. We've talked a little bit about speech with communication. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, being in a van because it's it's naturally noisy, mm -hmm. you have to speak loud with intent. So that really exercises your vocal cords and helps with speech and swallow. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a that's a bonus. And um, we, I read out loud while we're driving, and it's really improved my uh, stamina for vocal production. Mm -hmm. So I do that, and. I can tell if my husband's listening or not, because sometimes I'll throw in a, funny, <laughs> a little comment and, he, and he'll go, what? what? <laughs> yeah. Um, how about pain and fatigue? Um, I don't get really, I don't have much pain or fatigue when we're traveling, where I do and we're at home. I think that might be because I, I don't know why. Maybe I, I'm just doing different activities. Pain, I can get pain in my lower back from sitting, but you know, you can get up and move around carefully in a van so that's helpful um fatigue because i'm sleeping better that's not as much of an issue for me yeah fatigue attacks me more at home than when i'm out yeah I'm traveling um i seem to if i'm in pain when i leave the house i may still be in pain but i'm distracted it's distracted pain and i can deal with it better uh there's something else yeah, there's so much to see and and to learn and to experience that you don't get bored and i think that can lead to fatigue as well yeah oh another one of our most hated um, non-motor symptoms is constipation uh, yeah so it's nice to have your own place if you're going to be constipated but it's it's a pain <laughs> yeah, literally literally so i'm sure um marty that you would tell us about how much water we need to drink and some tricks for traveling with constipation sure um i don't that's not one of my symptoms not oh. oddly enough because most people with const with parkinson's do have constipation i go the other way mm -hmm. but um yeah it's, hydration is really important to deal with constipation so, you know 64 ounces of water a day um that's a gallon of water that's a lot especially if you're traveling and that you need to go to the restroom more often but you have it right there so that's important. Exercise is important. So you need to keep up that we need to keep up our exercise regimen and um, otherwise you can't keep things moving. If you're not moving on the outside, things won't move as well on the inside. So that's and a then fiber. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if they're not moving on the outside, then it's hard to keep them moving. Know, things aren't going to move on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then getting enough fiber in your diet, which can be challenging on the road, but there are grocery stores everywhere and you can get, you know, um, whole um, fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains and that type of thing. How about fiber so bars? Eat... Fiber well, bars. Oh, those fiber are good. Bar. Those are good. Yeah. And there's no way, you, there's no reason you can't eat the same way as you're, when you're traveling as you do when you're at home. Um, when we travel with some friends, it's almost a competition to see who can make the most, the best um, appetizer, dinner, dessert, you know, combination to see who who's the most creative on, on as we're camping. So, because you have two burners on your stove and I have one burner yeah. on my stove and a microwave right. which we've never used yet. So, <laughs> yeah, my microwave is a convection microwave and I we've only used it to heat up pizza or something. I've not used a convection piece of it. But I might venture out and do that this next trip. But. Um, we take a grill with us, so usually, so that that's another cooking option. So. I see here on our list, sweating and mood disorders. I am always way different than everybody else around me. If they're cold, I'm really hot. And if they're hot, I'm really cold. <laughs> Same here. I so, tend to be more cold than people, than most people. So I wear socks a lot. Mm -hmm. and I'm bundled up in a sweatshirt, even though it's 60 degrees outside. You can tell I'm... Live in, I've lived in California a long time because it's, <clears throat> for me, 60 is cold, but for me, you know, most people, it's not. But yeah, for, yeah, that for us, be a real issue. up here in the Northwest, it's a pleasant temperature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else we've, we've missed about? Um, the um, well, mood disorders, if you have, it's a good, traveling is a great way to um, treat apathy. 
and depression because you have if you have your traveling you have to kind of care about what you're doing and get up and go and do things and then doing things can help to improve your depression symptoms anxiety is um can be worsened actually by traveling because of traffic and other things that can happen so we need to develop strategies that to deal with that and i think both you and i have done that yeah. through the years we've learned how to deal with our anxiety and um the camper vans which i'm calling them class b camper vans uh they're tall and they're narrow and in the wind it is kind of frightening sometimes and i see my husband and he's just like he's a strong guy and he's really holding on to that wheel to keep us um in the right direction and of course my dog is barking <laughs> so yeah that can be scary and then traveling through large cities and mm -hmm. and making sure that you have your directions ready to go so that you don't miss an exit and then that can that's that's not a good thing if you um if you have to get get off of a freeway or a, at a big interchange in a large city that can be anxiety provoking it's especially if you're the co-pilot with the navigation yeah skills so well i'm sure that if you refer to our checklist you'll find some more um, things about non-motor non and motor symptoms that we've figured out work for us. Yeah.